Good morning, good morning. It is your boy Jake Obel back at it again for Not Many Noble. Reading the Bible through in 22 with you. We are in Joshua still. It is March 28th. What day of the year is March 28th? It is the 87th day of the year. National, oh, see, this is right right in my lane. National Black Forest Cake Day. I love Black Forest Cake. It's been a long time since I've had it, but I got to tell you, it is probably my favorite cake, I would say. It's nice. Black, uh, Schwarz, uh, so it says here Schwarzwaldo. I, think, I, I thought it was Schwarzwaldo. Schwarzwaldo Kirschtorte. They're probably right. I'm probably wrong because it's probably been too long. But, uh, yeah, Schwarzwaldo Kirschwasser, the specialty liqueur and the Black Forest mountain range of southwest Germany. It's beautiful. It is beautiful down there. It is National Schwarzwaldo Kirschtorte Day, National Black Forest Cake Day. So, anyways, yay. Yay for that. We are reading the Bible through chronologically in the World English Bible. It started in Genesis, went to Job, went to Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Now we are in Joshua. And from Joshua, yeah, we're going to go to Judges. Joshua 18. And we've got some more, man, we've got some more. Uh, divisions of of the land because uh, Israel has come into the promised land. They have invaded, killed, destroyed, moved out, executed the judgments of God that um, that they were called upon to do. Now they're dividing up the land, and that means a bunch of weird names for me to say. So let's get after it. Joshua eighteen. The whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled themselves together at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The land was subdued before them. Seven tribes remained among the children of Israel, which had not yet divided their inheritance. Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go in to possess the land which Yahweh your God of your fathers has given you? Appoint for yourselves three men from each tribe. I will send them, and they shall arise, walk through the land, and describe it according to their inheritance. Then they shall come to me. They shall divide it into seven portions. Judah shall live in his borders on the south, and the house of Joseph shall live in their borders on the north. You shall survey the land into seven parts and bring the description here to me, and I will cast lots for you before Yahweh our God. However, the Levites have no portion among you, for the priesthood of Yahweh is their inheritance. Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance east of the Jordan, which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave them. The men arose and went. Joshua commanded those who went to survey the land, saying, Go walk through the land, survey it, and come again to me. I will cast lots for you here before Yahweh and Shiloh. The men went and passed through the land and surveyed it by cities into seven portions in a book. Portions in a book. They came to Joshua to the camp at Shiloh. Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before Yahweh. There Joshua divided the land for the, to the children of Israel according to their divisions." This whole business of casting lots always struck me as a little strange. You know what I'm saying? Like I know they had, I mean, they had they had a method. They had um, the the tabernacle. They had you know the God. They were like they were they were presenting themselves before God, and there was kind of like an official officiality, <laughs> officialness. Oh man, it's too early. Official. It was kind. Of, There's something about it, right? There was something about it, and it was more than just like rolling the dice and but still like they didn't they didn't like they didn't hear the voice of god for it they were casting lots before god and the thing about casting lots or finding a way to you know come before god and say lord what is the thing that you want me to do who's getting this and who's getting that who's going to divide this and who's going to divide that to me it does seem a little random, right? And then I always doubt, is this really from the Lord? 
You know, it, it feels like a testing of God. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not suggesting they're testing God, but I'm saying like when you're trying to think of what to do, like what should I put my energies into? Should I do this? Should I do that? And there's indecision and lack of faith and fear and trepidation all mixed and mingled together. And sometimes we're trying to, um, like and the Proverbs even say, you know, cast lots, it's very decision is, the, ca- the, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's very decision is from the Lord. You know what I mean? So it's like, is that, is, is that the way that you're supposed to go? You, you know, like, or did you, did we mess up somewhere? It was my lack of faith or, um, am I testing God? So not even be considering it in this way. You know, is there a better way to consider what to do, how to move forward, how to, in this case, divide up the land? But that's what they chose. They chose to cast lots here. The lot of the tribe of the children of Benjamin came up according to their families. The border of their lot went out between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. Their border on the north quarter was from the Jordan. The border went up to the side of Jericho on the north and went up through the hill country westward. It ended at the wilderness of Beth Avon. The border passed along there from there to Luz, to the side of Luz, also called Bethel, southward. The border went down to Ataroth Adar by the mountain that lies on the south of Beth Haran, the lower. The border extended and turned around on the west quarter southward from the mountain that lies before Beth Haran southward and ended at Kiriath Baal, also called Kiriath Jirim, a city of the children of Judah. This was the west quarter. The south quarter was from the farthest part of Kiriath Jirim. The border went out westward and went out to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah. The border went down to the farthest part of the mountain that lies before the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is in the valley of Rephaim northward. It went down to the valley of Hinnom to the side of the Jebusite southward and went down to En-Rogel. It extended northward, went out at En Shemesh and went out to Geliloth, which is opposite the ascent of Adumin, Mim, Adumim. It went down to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. It passed along to the side opposite the Arabah northward and went down to the Arabah. The border passed along to the side of Beth Hogla northward and the border ended at the north bay of the Salt Sea at the south end of the Jordan. This was the south border. The Jordan was its border on the east quarter. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin by the borders around it according to their families. Now the cities of the tribe of the children of Benjamin according to their families were Jericho, Beth Hogla, Emek Keziz, Beth Araba, Zemaraim, Bethel, Avim, Para, Ophrah, Shephar, Amoni, Ophni, and Geba, twelve cities with their villages. Gibeon, Ramah, Beeroth, Mizpah, Shephir, Shephira, Moza, Rechem, Irpil, Irpil, Tarala, Zela, Eleph, the Jebusite, also called Jerusalem, Gibeath, and Kiriath, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin according to their families. <clears throat> Sorry, I know it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of strange names. And they cast lots to figure it out. So we got 19 as well. I think it's just 18 and 19 today. 1948. 48. I'll say so. We're not even going all the way to the end of 19. Okay. And then we, we the Dan. We get the inheritance of Dan here. That's at the end. Okay. So those were the lots that they that they cast. I know I didn't give you an answer at the last at the end of my last little rambling there. It's like, well what's the answer? How then do you decide? I think well your prayer, I think. Prayer is what we do. Wash it in prayer. Uh search the word, search the scripture. Like is there a, a more clear answer even if it goes against the emotions that you currently have about the situation? There's uh, prayer, wisdom, and a multitude of counselors, which we've talked about before, but that should come, I think, a little bit later. That is typically where I run to. I put wisdom in the multitude of counselors at number one. What are they saying on the internet? <laughs> what are they saying on the internet about this? So I go get wisdom from others and then make my decision and then end up not even going to prayer and searching the scripture at all. Then I think probably should do both prayer, search the scripture, 
and then seek wisdom. That's what I think right now. As far as casting lots, I guess you could. I guess you could, but mm, I don't know exactly what it would look like. Is it, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know exactly what it would look like, but if there's, you know, two even or equal opportunities ahead of you, prayerfully, you, they've been prayerfully considered, scripture has been searched, wisdom has been also sought, then make a decision and go. Bless the Lord. Joshua 19, the second lot came out for Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. Their inheritance was in the middle of the inheritance of the children of Judah. They had for their inheritance Beersheba, or Sheba, Molada, Hazor Shual, Bala, Ezem, Eltalad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazar Susa, Beth Lebeoth, and Sharuhen. Thirteen cities with their villages. Ayan, Rimon, Ether, and Ashen, four cities with their villages. And all the villages that were around these cities to Balath Beer, Ramah of the south. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon according to their families. Out of the part of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon, for the portion of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had inheritance in the middle of their inheritance. The third lot came up for the children of Zebulun according to their families. The border of their inheritance was to Sarid. The border went up westward even to Merilah and reached to Dabasheth. It reached to the brook that is before Jochnin. It turned to Sarid eastward toward the sunrise to the border of Chisloth Tabor. It went out to Dabarath and went up to Japhia. From there it passed along eastward to Gath Hefer to Ethkasin, and it went out at Rimon, which stretches to Nia. The border turned around it on the north to Hanathon, and it ended at the valley of Iphtah-el, Kata, Nahalal, Shimron, Idala, and Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulun, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The fourth lot came out for Issachar, even for the children of Issachar, according to their families. Their border was to Jezreel, Chezeleth, Shanum, Hapharaim, Shion, Anharath, Rabbath, Kishion, Ebez, Remeth, and Ganim, and Hada, and Beth, Pazes. The border reached to Tabor, Shaha, Zuma, and Beth Shemesh. Their border ended at the Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their families, the cities with their villages. The fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families. Their border was Helkath, Hali, Betan, Aksh, Akshaf, Alamelech, Ahmad, Mishal. It reached to Carmel westward and to Shehor Libnath. It turned toward the sunrise to Beth Dagon and reached to Zebulun and to the valley of Iphtah El North El, northward to Beth Emek and Nael. It went out to Kabul on the left hand, and Ebron, Rehob, Hamon, and Cana, even to Great Sidon. The border turned to Ramah, to the fortified city of Tyre, and the border turned to Hosa. It ended at the sea by the region of Aksib, Uma, also in Aphek, and Rehob, 22 cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The sixth lot came out for the children of Naphtali, even for the children of Naphtali, according to their families. Their border was from Helef, from the oak of uh, the oak in Azan, Zayananim, Adamai, Nekeb, and Jabneel to Lakum. It ended at the Jordan. The border turned westward to Asnoth Tabor and went out from there to Hokok. It reached to Zebulun on the south and reached to Asher on the west and to Judah at the Jordan toward the sunrise. The fortified cities were Zidim, Zer, Hamath, Rakath, Chenareth, Adama, Rama, Hazor, Kedeth, Idri, and Hazor, Iron, Migdal El, Horem, Beth Anath, and Beth Shemesh. Nineteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, according to their families, the cities with their villages. The seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families. The border of their inheritance was Zorah, Eshtaol, Irshamesh, Shalabim, Aijalon, Ithla, Elon, 
Timna, Ekron, Eltaka, Gibbethon, Balath, Jehud, Beni Barak, Gathrimon, Majarkon, and Rakon, with the border opposite Joppa. The border of the children of Dan went out beyond them, for the children of Dan went up and fought against Leshem and took it, and struck it with the edge of the sword and possessed it, and lived therein, and called Leshem Dan, after the name of Dan their forefather. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan according to their families, these cities with their villages. So they finished distributing the land for inheritance by its borders. The children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua the son of Nun among them. According to Yahweh's commandment, they gave him the city, which he asked even Timnath Sarah in the hill country of Ephraim, and he built the city and lived there. These are the inheritances which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the father's houses of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance by lot in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tent of meeting. So they finished dividing the land. But a boom, but a bang. That was Joshua. 19. And I believe that's it for us for the day. Not bad. We're at 16, just over 16 minutes. Uh, pray real quick and then we will um, bounce up on out of here. And I, I don't have any missionaries to pray for uh, today per this little schedule. It was more um, more like local church things. So let's just pray for our local churches where oh excuse me excuse me uh, uh, sorry about that little stretching going in that's what happens when you get after it in the morning i would say so again if you're driving eyes up eyes on the road pay attention what you're doing focus on the task at hand if you're not it's cool you can close your eyes let us let us pray father thank you for today thank you for your word thank you uh, how you've recounted your mercies to your people, to us, and we pray that you would have mercy on us also, that our hearts, our minds would be set on the promised land, um, that time with you, and that we would do all the that you have commanded us while we are here uh, in this earth, in this time, and that we would obey, that we would repent, that we would seek your face. Pray that you would make these decisions that we have um, it seems like they they just always they're constantly with us. What's where where to live? What job? What school? Should I do this? Should I do that? Um, uh, children are having questions about what they should do. Um, how many children? How many children should we have? Spouse? Uh, who should I who, who should I try to marry? Who should I marry? Where should we live? What should we do? How do we go about these things? A lot of things that you have given us answers in, in your word, and I pray that we would humble ourselves to receive them, and other things where you've given us liberty, liberty to make our own decisions, and I pray that you would please give us wisdom to make good decisions, that you would please uh, give us godly desires of our hearts. You've promised to take out our heart of stone, give us a heart of flesh, and with that new heart, pray new desires would come. Would you please grant us godly desires and then give us the courage and the grace to pursue those godly desires in a way that you uh, have, have, have deemed uh, worthy of your children and appropriate for your people. And Lord, we lift up our local churches to you today, wherever wherever we are currently going. Um, they're, they're hard to find. Local churches that are preaching the gospel faithfully and simply hard to find, but I pray for unity amongst the local churches, for the people that are listening. For us, it's the college church, and we pray for unity and for blessings there. We pray for, for wisdom um, in the staff as they uh, consider their paths forward. They've got all kinds of decisions about uh, libraries and buildings and service times and hymns and songs and carpet colors and cleaning and uh, volunteers and ministries and so many different things. So many of the different things that, that easily distract us from the task at hand of preaching the gospel, worshiping our great and holy God, loving people, loving those who need it. Give us grace to be purposed about that. Give us grace to be focused on the things that matter most. Give us grace to love one another, knit our hearts together with our spouses Give us grace to love and to lead, to obey. 
to seek your face. We pray uh, for all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out uh, as we read through the Bible. I know some of these things, some of these, some days are a little more exhausting than others. And then, you know, sometimes listening to me stumble through the names can be exhausting as well. You're like this guy, this guy right here. Cannot do it. Cannot listen to him. So appreciate you hanging in there with me. Uh, and I will catch you tomorrow. Have a good day.